brand new season of anime is upon us in about a week or so. Now I'm gonna go over everything in fall 2024. Just look at the cover pic, look at the summary, see if it's worth checking out. First up, guys, should we watch this? ReZero. Third season. Oh man, three seasons. I gotta watch season one and two. This looks pretty mid though, just looking at the cover picture. Hmm. I don't know, man. Just a dude in a tracksuit? With like a white-haired girl? Nah, bro. It looks like a shitty isekai to me. I think I'm gonna skip this one, man. First episode has a runtime of 90 minutes. God damn, bro. 90 minute intro, guys. Are you guys ready for this shit? Oh, that's crazy. Now, I wonder how we're gonna be given these episodes, right? Does that mean like during the premiere it's gonna be 90, but like they're gonna release the first like couple episodes separate? Like how Frieden dropped like four in a row immediately? I'm not sure, but if it's a 90 minute episode... <laughs> yeah, that's a three hour reaction. It, that's a fucking movie. So it's looking like October 2nd, guys. We're gonna have a movie night. <laughs> Next Wednesday, we are basically gonna have a movie night. Oshinoko is not even ending this week either, right? Oh, Jesus. I'm not sure exactly how they're gonna handle it, but... If it's a full 90 minute... Oh boy, that's gonna be a three hour reaction. There are 16 episodes slated, right? Eight episodes in October moving forward, and then eight episodes separated, you know, next season and beyond. Sorry, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna come out in February. We're not gonna obviously check out the trailers and everything just yet, because even the cover picture, this is low-key spoilers in terms of, you know, uh, art, which I don't really care about, but very excited for ReZero. This should be the, <laughs> the anime that just hard carries, unless Don the Don has something else to tell me. Now, this anime, you know, this shit got leaked quite hard. Episodes like 1 to 6, and it was slated at 7 to 12, should also be arriving, but no, nah, I don't think that really happened. The opening is out, first half of the season is out, Granny is looking woodable than ever. You know, you have this kid, I think it's all about like, one believes in ghosts and the other doesn't believe in... Like, they don't believe in aliens and they don't believe in ghosts, and it's like swap between the girl and the guy. And then he gets like these powers based off the trailer and like, we're just fighting. It looks like a fucking trip, right? It looks like a fucking acid trip. People have been hyping it up. Many people are like, oh my god, I read the manga just because of the marketing. And they're like, oh my god, it's so amazing. We'll see about that. The studio is by Science Saru. What have they made that we know? Uh, a thing, actually. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Oh, they did the Devil Man Grab in 2018. But other than that, the studio is... Not many reputable enemies that at least I notice. But maybe that means that they can pour all the resources into their fucking Keystone project and deliver something good rather than a studio like JC staff taking five separate animes to do. We'll definitely be checking out Dan Dan, but seeing as it's a shonen anime, I really wonder how it's gonna do in my channel. Next, Blue Lock, baby! Oh yes, we just watched the video talking about what's gonna happen in season two. And the U20 arc apparently is gonna be crazy. Right, this is gonna be one of the best arcs of this manga, if not in sports genre itself. And what is the studio? <laughs> 8-Bit Studio. We are cooked, I'm afraid. <laughs> because they did fucking Tensor Season 3 and Mahoka. And Tensor Season 3, very mid-adaptation. I think the IP deserves something better. Mahoka, worse than mid-adaptation. They fucking butchered this series. Irregular Magic High School forever ends in my heart with Season 1. What a fucking perfect season. Um, there's a lot of leaks saying, uh, don't get your expectations too high, right? But it's, I think it's going to be hype regardless because these U20 guys, right? This guy specifically, this Oliver guy is going to be insane. If you're a fan of sports anime, if you know Blue Lock, then I'm sure you're going to love this season despite the shortcomings in the, the animation department because, you know, there's a lot of CGI and uh, shitty art shown here and there in the trailers. Next one. We have Uzumaki. Uzumaki... I don't think y'all gonna watch this shit. Maybe by yourself you will, but as a reaction, I'm not too sure. It's a four episode, right? And it's from Junji Ito, and everyone's gonna glaze this fucking guy because Junji Ito is just peak horror, just disturbing dark stories, right? Um, I have nothing personally against or for it. I just know that my audience probably don't really give a fuck about a show like this. Maybe I'll watch it by myself late at night, just cranked out of my mind, then it's gonna be a trip. Who knows? What story? What studio is this? 
The studio is two studios, Drive and Akatsuki. Oh, they did Konosuba Season 3. And Megumin spinoff. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Oh, they did Fate Grand Hoarder CMs. Okay. And then this side... Yeah, I don't really know, man. I don't really know, man. But horror fans, y'all be eating good. Go check out Uzumaki. Next up... Another season where Battle Shonen's like Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero Academia, right? Fucking what else, bro? Kaiju 8. All those motherfuckers in the Battle Shonen audience on YouTube just farm out. They just get 100k views per video and I'm stuck outside. I can't join the club because my audience is a full of monkeys that just want to watch shitty isekais. And hey, it is what it is, right? <laughs> the audience forms to the creator. You are my monkeys, and I'm the monkey king. It is what it is. One day, maybe we can get a... Honestly, I'm low-key thing. And you know what the crazy shit is, bro? How the fuck is... Bro. Look at the... Look at the poll. How? How is Hunter Hunter losing? This is why, you know, we'll never be able to watch Bleach <laughs> in our channel, bro. Because of shit like this. I think we'll still have fun here. For sure, we're gonna have a lot of fun here, but... It's really hard for me to crack into the Battle Shonen audience unless I make a completely new channel and treat it like Kaka TV2, right? If I treat it like Kaka TV2 by just making a completely new channel and then to start with like an every opening for Bleach or something, I think that would do well, right? That's how you get a fresh template. YouTube algorithm understands who your audience is. You get into the Battle Shonen alg algorithm. You just deliver only Shonen animes. Maybe that's how we should watch Hunter x Hunter, bro. Straight up. Just give up on the main channel, create a separate channel called Kaka TV3 just for Battle Shonen bullshit, and we farm it there. I'm not really sure, but that's the current state for me and Bleach. Unfortunate, man. What studio? Piero. Piero Films. They <laughs> have only done... Are they this new? No, I, I have heard of Stuart Piero. I think that in this, you know, this analyst uh, website, they just don't have more backlog, or maybe they just like a brand new branch of you know, Studio Piero. I don't know, but Battle Shonen audience, y'all gonna be fucking eating. Next up, Seirei Gensoki 2. Well, it's a season two. What does that mean, right? Well, if it's a season two, shit, you gotta watch season one. And what happened every time I put Spirit Chronicles in? <laughs> yeah, this, this, and this anime has actually gone to multiple polls, bro. Didn't make it into this poll. It, it did make it into a Patreon exclusive and lost. Is there anything else that we tried before? I think in the Phase Zero poll. Yeah, no, 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 not, not here. Uh, maybe that's about it. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna force Season 1 down my audience's throat if they don't even give a fuck about it from the beginning just to catch up for Season 2. Hell no. What studio are they though? Hob, sorry, that's Hobby Japan. That's a producer. Studio is TMS Entertainment and WoW World. TMS does a lot of shit. They're doing Sakamoto days. This is gonna be a super hype. Just like Dan Dan, right? This is gonna be super fucking hype, I think. Wow, world. Yeah, I don't know. They did Spirit Chronicles Season 1, so I guess it's the same studio that's gonna do, you know, Season 2. That's, that's, at least that's good to hear, right? To have some consistency. Arifureta! Oh, y'all think that ReZero is THE Isekai? Coming up for Fall 2024? <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> You think that Arc 5 or ReZero, Arc 6 and Arc 5 is gonna come close to what Ari Furata can deliver? <laughs> Ain't nobody got shit on my girl fucking, uh, what's her name? <laughs> Shea, right? No. Yue? Shea. Yeah, yeah, that's a funny girl name. That's a bad look if I'm trying to glaze Ari Furata and I don't even remember the characters' names. Listen, um, you know, it's just peak trashy anime. We've covered seasons 1s and 2s. It's not... The best, but it definitely has its moments, and it is the isekai template that I do love where you do get summoned in with the rest of the class, and it's a power fantasy of the excluded outcast saving everyone's ass. The Empire arc, right? It's looking like we're going to be fighting the Empire. There's going to be, like, you know, uh, us going up against them because there's, like, a grudge against them with the Bunny Clan because of the kind of oppression they put on us. What studio is this? Ass Raid. Ass Raid. Okay, they did season... Okay, they are OG Ari Furata guys. Man, they fucking love Ari Furata, huh? Before... I don't know what these are. Oh! Oh my... Okay. One random night. What I like to do is to go on random websites and click the random button. 
for just like a random anime. I, I love to just check out random ass fucking animes late at night. Most of them are super old ones, right? This? I watched episode one of Order? Holy shit. <laughs> it's so fucking bad, bro. <laughs> it's so peak trash, bro. Like, the whole premise of it seemed dark and actually, like, you know, cool for a second. I'm like, whoa, you make these, like, wishes and somehow the main character calls like an apocalypse oh my god what are we gonna do and he's supposed to live in secrecy and this girl is out to fucking kill us and her sister nah there were some serious moments that immediately just gets thrown under the bus by having this main character just fucking go goo goo gaga over titties on a fucking girl immediately i'm like yeah nah but if this studio is just i guess they're very just faithful for arifureta huh it also makes sense how this was made by <laughs> the same studio that did arifureta the more i think about it but yes, we will be covering Ari Furata in this channel. Go check out the playlist if you have not. Next one. Oh yeah. If you're watching this, and if you have any anime reaction channels that you're following, Kodansha is the bane of all existence. Now, just because an anime, such as Wistoria or Blue Lock, right? Just because they're under, you know, Kodansha, it doesn't really mean that they're the ones holding the copyright. But sometimes, on YouTube, I mean, you can upload a video and basically see what the copyright shit is. And um, when you do uh, for copy of Shangri-La Frontier, it's Kodansha specifically on the YouTube side for their content ID. And they strike every fucking channel with no mercy. So you see this shit, get the hell out. We'll watch this as a Patreon exclusive if it ever makes it on there. But just warning you guys, you see anyone doing Kodansha shit, they're going to make a community post or a video saying, oh my god, our channel's going to get deleted. What I fucking tell you, stay away from them. Next up. Ooh. <laughs> we got Don Machi season five, baby. Unfortunately, we only have season four in our channel because Don Machi is actually the reason that I got two copyright strikes on my main channel. I actually decided to delete that shit two years ago. Kind of sad, but Don Machi was still great regardless. Season five is going to be apparently one of the most hyped shit ever. Just look at the cover picture, bro. Oh my God. Freya is finally entering the fray. Get it? Haha. Uh -huh. And so is Seer. It's like, what the hell? You're an important character? We just had a whole arc with fucking Ryu and you're telling me another bar girl is going to be taking the slot? That's kind of the theme of Danmachi though, right? Every new season, there's a new girl to kind of put extra attention to and it's going to be Seer this time. Along with Freya. And what is the connection between these two? <laughs> I don't know. Are they the same person? Mom and daughter? Older sister? Who knows, but I am definitely going to be checking that out. And the studio is indeed JC Staff. JC Staff, you know, they butchered One Punch Man Season 2. <laughs> JC Staff uh, is a uh, hit or a miss, right? They did do Skimichi Moon Fantasy. We watched Level 2 villain, uh, Level two Cheat as well, but they have like a habit of taking on a lot of projects and not being able to deliver consistently. So people's assumptions are Damachi is going to be their pet favorite. Like, this is going to be their passion project, while other animes like Mao 2099 and all these other ones get, like, less resources. But, hey, we're going to be focused on Damachi. I think JC staff will deliver polish to Damachi because it is their, like, you know, flagship product for this season. So, I'm definitely going to be checking it out. Check out the Damachi playlist if you haven't. Yeah, I don't think we're watching this, are we? I don't know, Hako. Is this Blue Box? This is Blue Box, right? And it's by the studio that actually did uh, Season 1 Tower of God, which is good. I enjoy Season 1 Tower of God. They did Rick and Morty. Wait, what the fuck is this? Is this a Rick and Morty? Nagatauru san. This is the Tan Lolly rom com, right? Okay. And the Nanatsu no Taizai, the remake. Not the remake, the spin off, which is way better <laughs> animated than the original fucking series beyond like season two or three i think right when it becomes seven deadly frames but sports is already uh hard for my audience to enjoy blue lock already is kind of a gamble obviously about like two years ago we checked out blue lock that audience may not even exist anymore i don't know i'll, I'll yeah uh, i don't know i'm not sure if blue box is something you guys are going to give a fuck about maybe it's an amazing anime maybe it's not I am not going to go in um, promising you that we'll watch this, but there is potential if people actually want to talk about it and there's other channels blown up with Blue Box, then I'll check it out for sure. I will, but I just feel like on a first instinct, gut instinct, it's just not something my audience would prefer, but we'll see. 
Uh, Gun Gale Online Season 2. Well, we gotta watch Season 1, right? The interesting thing about this one is that it's A1 Pictures doing Season 2, while Season 1 was done by, like, a shittier studio. Um, SAO... Sure, it has the name. It has the name GGO, but it doesn't have Shinon nor Death Gun. Zaza. I don't think people really give a fuck about this, unless it has the core crew, even if Kirito is mentioned. Therefore, I will not cover this. Unless you guys want to do it, then simply pull it in, right? Simply pull it in, win a community poll, and we can watch it then. Dragon Ball Daima is something that I might check out. I don't know, because like anyone can just watch this, right? And again, I just told you that Battle Shonen fails on my channel. What's the studio? I only see producers here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Do I want to fucking get into bed with Shueisha and Toei and them? I don't know what the copyright situation is going to be with this anime. Mm, undecided. Undecided. Next up. I don't know Exorcist. Well, this is like, you know, I don't even know which season of Blue Exorcist this is, but this is something that we can't watch because obviously we need to watch the prequels and you guys have never even mentioned Blue Exorcist as a fucking show that you even want to watch. Studio Volen is the one that's doing it. What are they all about? I got no clue. Oh, I kind of remember this when it was airing in 2016. And people were typing this up as like a OG anime that's getting like a modern an adaptation. But um, besides from that, I don't think this is my audience, man. Next up, what is this one? Kimi wa maid wo sama. This is the story of a maid who is all alone in this world, but who finally finds a family. Told from young that her only worth is as a killer maid. Okay. She's like an assassination maid? Yuki had known nothing else except cold efficiency and following orders. So Kudre cold calculating murder maid. Now that she has a chance to leave her past behind, she arrives at the doorsteps of our insert protagonist, Hitoyoshi Yokoya, asking to be employed as a maid? Thus begins the journey of a former assassin learning what it means to be normal. All right. This sounds like a rom-com slice of life that might be fun. I'm kind of I'm kind of down. This could be fun, guys. It So far everything that we've checked out was like battle shonen isekai bullshit, right? My, finally we get like a slice of life rom-com. I'm down. I'll check out one episode. I like the concept. I think it suits my audience. Yeah, I'm down. At what studio are they? Felix Film. Mm, don't know, don't know. Oh, we're going to be checking out this anime too, by the way. This is the uh, yapping anime? I forget. But uh, yes, we're gonna. this is also airing at the same time as well. The studio is doing these two animes this season. Got it. <laughs> they did MF Ghost? <laughs> That's kind of funny. My friend fucking... My friend doesn't really watch anime, but he fucking loves Initial D, so he watches MF Ghost. He's, he's always like, please, fucking react to MF Ghost. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm not gonna kill my channel by watching a show that no one's gonna watch except you. Nekobar! <laughs> Nekobar! <laughs> Nekobar anime! Oh, boy. Uh, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> it's a lot of Nekopada, but uh... <laughs> Maybe Nekopada like a fan service in this anime? I'm not sure, but uh, hey, we're gonna be checking out one episode of this. Next up! Hey hey! Appraisal Isekai! Solid 7 out of 10 in season 1. Minimum 7 out of 10 in my opinion. It could be definitely rated higher. I think that this anime, if you haven't checked it out... Check it out. This is not your average... Just power fantasy isekai of a main character that just does everything and everything is... And, and then the world building is weak. No, 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 no. This anime is about a kid who is not OP, but has the powers to appraise others. He understands people's potentials, even though other many of these people may seem like a weakling or a loser in some aspects, right? Useless. They're actually really good at one other thing. Sometimes they're just fucking amazing at everything, right? <clears throat> and it's all about ours, like, creating uh, his army, his people, his domain by using his appraisal skills because he himself is just a toddler. Now he has to step up for his daddy to fill in his shoes. I thought the season one was kind of slow in the sense that, like, they were trying to do a really good job establishing all the core characters, as well as world building 
by having these different characters from different neighboring nations and make us actually give a fuck about what's going to happen. There's going to be like a huge succession work arc that's been built up in season one. And I'm sure season two is going to be a climax of that. So I'm very excited for this. If you again haven't checked it out, I implore you, check it out. It's a great isekai. It's not the peak isekai, but I can definitely tell you it's not some fucking trash that you'll see every season as Kadokawa releases like 30 new isekais. What are their studios though? Studio Mother. Yep, they did season one. It was honestly pretty good. <laughs> they did Arifuna tattoo? I guess they kind of like helped out, right? Studios can definitely like um, collaborate and help out, but fantastic. Fantastic, bro. Next up. What is this? Hmm. Takuya and Rika are co-workers in a travel agency in Tokyo. They're both single, but they don't mind. Since they're introverts with fulfilling lives at home. Unfortunately, now their job is looking to staff an office in Siberia. <laughs> okay. And non-married employees are the first to be considered. Rika is desperate to avoid the transfer and goes to Taka with an idea. Fake the marriage, right? If they pretend that they're getting married in a year, they can stay in Tokyo. The only problem is the two of them barely know each other. If these two quiet co-workers fake a relationship, will it turn into something real? <laughs> Slice of life rom-com? The studio is? I... Oh! Oh, hey! They did Vision Sicolius! That's, that's interesting. Mm, smartphone Isekai? Uh, I don't really know anything else here. I am not too sure about this one, guys. The elf made... Sorry, not the elf made. Assassin made, you know... That one sounds more like my audience. This one, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. But the premise is pretty interesting. Maybe it's one of those rom-coms that's going to be underrated. I don't know. But no promises with this one. But if you guys want it, let me know. Rama? I'm not too sure how this one is going to be handled. A remake of an old series with my audience are a bunch of people that is younger than Rama itself. Probably not. I don't know. Like, are people actually going to give a fuck about this in my channel? I don't know. I know it's a legendary iconic show, but again, in the game of YouTube, it doesn't matter what's popular. What matters is like what's going to be popular with my audience, and I don't think this is going to do well, even if it's a classic. Next up. Hmm. I'm like, is this some Yaoi BL shit? But there's a bunch of girls. Okay. All right. What is this? Kamono Hashi Run, oh, it's the second season. All right, it's the second season. We can't fucking watch this. You gotta watch season one for this shit. We're out. Next up. What is, what is this? Raise wa Taningali. Somei Renji is Somei Yoshino's grandfather and leader of the Somei group. The Kansai region's biggest Yakuza group. Okay, we got some gangsters. When he arranges for her to be married to Miyama Kirishima, Yoshino has to move to Miyama clan estate. The Kanto region's biggest Yakuza group. Kirishima warmly welcomes Yoshino and is such a pleasant, personable, and nice young man that nobody would suspect that he comes from a Yakuza family. This puts Yoshino at ease, even though she was initially feeling insecure in this unfamiliar place. But then, a certain event leads to Yoshino witnessing the real Kirishima. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's kind of interesting, I guess, right? It's like a um, romance diary and uh, drama kind of show where it's about like a Yakuza member getting involved with the girl. Huh? Studio Dean. Studio Dean. The whole Yakuza delinquent aspect, I do understand the appeal. <laughs> they did. All right, that's what they're cooking right after Gimai Seikaku, bro. Oh, they did remonster? That's a job. <laughs> that's crazy. Days of my stepsister is also remonster. <laughs> that's crazy. You would never think that. What the fuck? Completely different team. That's got to be a completely different team. I remember this one too, but you guys told me this shit is so fucking mid. There's no point even checking this one out. Hmm. What do you guys think about it? What do you guys think about this one? Ah, I'm not too certain. At a first glance, it just doesn't feel like the kind of show that my audience would enjoy. I do kind of enjoy the like Yakuza trope. But again, one of those shows where it's just like, let's hold off. Let's not just, uh, you know, immediately just go into something because, you know, it's a new show. Let's let's just let's, let's just uh, let it cook, right? Let's let's just let it cook and 
Uh, oh, that burp cook too. But um, we'll see what's gonna happen with this one later. Next up, Mao 2099, JC staff. So this is the one about it's like a cyberpunk metropolis, right? Where uh. Legendary demon lord Veltal has his second coming five centuries in the making, but this landscape is nothing like the one he conquered all those years ago. For the fusion of magic and engineering has elevated civilization to dazzling, unprecedented heights. Veltal may have been reduced to a historical footnote, but make no mistake, this brave new world for be his for the taking. So this is going to be a reverse isekai, right? Where the demon king just like shows up in a futuristic world and he's just trying to adapt to it. We saw, you know, some videos covering this. I don't know. This is by JC Staff as well. So obviously, you know, Damachi is going to be the main focus. The JC Staff is doing a lot of, you know, anime this season. So it's an interesting premise and I feel like that my audience would like it. But at the same time, I'm not really too convinced just yet. Maybe we could try one episode. It, ugh, it depends. If it falls on a day where nothing is airing, maybe I'll try it. No promises. Be right back. All right, I'm back. Next one. The villainous anime? Is this the villainous one? Rekishi ni nokuru akujo ni naruzo. What the fuck does that mean in English? Yeah, I'll become a villainous who goes down in history. Got it. Me, the same girl who hates all those prim and proper heroines, got reincarnated as the villain in the world of my favorite fantasy dating sim. My dream come true, so I'm gonna leave my mark on history by becoming the world's greatest villain. I love it already. This girl is a demon. She hates these pretty little girls. That's just like, oh, save me little princes. Nah, fuck them. She is a pure villainess and she's embracing the rule. But to do that, I'll need to get a lot stronger and smarter. Just one problem. The harder I try to be evil, the harder the prince falls for me. <laughs> so it sounds like, you know, she's gonna be like a... It's a massive bitch, right? Just be very mean and cold. But all the princes are masochists. And they love that shit. <laughs> At this rate, will I ever hear my place in history? 100%. Absolutely. We're going to check this out. Villainous shows. It's basically an isekai. It is, right? You get reincarnated as a villainous in like an ultimate game, right? So obviously, it is an isekai. I love the whole concept. We've watched Mob Psycho. It was fantastic. The studio is Maho Film. And they have done, I don't know. Uh, hey, Toru! No, this is not Index though, right? It has nothing to do with Index, right? I uh, don't know. Haven't seen any of these animes. Mm, I don't know. No clue. Fucking no clue what Maho Film is all about. But I love the whole concept of this. A villainous who's just embracing this villain. So just going to be the biggest hater. I'll be watching it for sure. Next up, Amagami-san Chi no Emusubi, which is also trying the, tying the knot with an Amagami sister. Plus some shrine maiden shit. Uryu Kamiate is a high school student striving to enter Kyoto's university medical school. <laughs> Only Kyoto? What a fucking failure. Not even Tokyo University? I can't believe you're not the top 0.0000001%. After being raised at an orphanage, Uryu is taken in by the chief priest at the Yamagami Shrine, where he begins to live as a freeloader and to cohabit with Yae, Yuna, and Asahi, the three beautiful Shrine Maiden Sisters. What's more, the condition he must meet in order to live at the Shrine for free is to marry into the family and inherit the Shrine. Uh, this you, you think that isekai is power fantasy you have no understanding what power fantasy is 
rom-coms or the true power fantasy. You can be... Well, okay, this guy is a fucking Kyoto University medical school kid, okay? He's not a, he's not a nobody, he's not a fucking loser, right? For sure, he, he is definitely a person of, of prestige, but like, motherfucker just gets free rent, and the only the one condition for the free rent is marry my daughters, and you will also inherit my entire net worth. Amazing! How will Uryu overcome his marriage meetings with the three sisters, as well as the many challenges that the Amagami Shrine faces? So begins a miraculous rom-com about living under the same roof with three shrine maidens. There seems to be a sub-genre within the rom-com niche where it's all about shrine maidens, right? I think I've seen time after time each new season, just like a new shrine maiden harm rom-com showing up. I am not sure. If this is supposed to be on like that hundred girlfriend tier of like harm and comedy, yeah, I'll check it out. But is this something my audience is going to give a fuck about? Maybe? I don't know. It really depends on the execution of it. Let's look at the studio. It's by Studio Drive. And they have done Konosuke Sin 3, Uzumaki. Oh, basically it's the same studio that's going to do Uzumaki. I don't know. Undecided, guys. Undecided. Next. Studio Madhouse. Chi. Chi kyu no undo ni sweet. What is that? Orb on the movements of the oh this is the flat earth anime yes we're watching this yes otaku spirits video informed us about how this anime is not set in fucking you know japanese high school setting now fuck that bullshit we out in like the 15th century poland and we're called a heretic because we don't think that the world is flat the setting is 15th century Poland. It was a time when heretical ideas led to uh, led those to who possess such a mindset to being burned at the stake for their beliefs. Already fucking love it. Crucifying dudes. Let's go. The protagonist, Rafal, is a child prodigy, expected to major in theology, the most important subject at the time, at the university where he plans to skip a grade. One day, however, he, com he comes across a mysterious man and is now studying a possible truth in the midst of heretical thought. This might not be enough for you guys, but based on, you know, Taco Spirit's review of this and just... I, I, I just... I love this whole concept. Now, it's a personal preference. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be into this shit, but... It's by Studio Madhouse. That's got to stand for something, right? We could expect some slave labor quality anime coming out, so... You know what? We're going to check out at least one episode. I am going to check out at least one episode of that shit. Next up. Mahosama Retry R. This is the second season though, right? I can't watch this shit because we have to watch the prequel. The premise looks pretty funny and it's honestly like uh, something that I think would resonate with my audience. But you guys have yet to get the shit in a poll. So gonna put that on standby. What is this one? Uh, this one is Studio Pira one. Uh, Tsumashou. Story follows Keisuke Nijima who lost his beloved wife, Takae. Uh, Oh, this is my daughter is my wife. <laughs> no, 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 no. My, it's not my daughter is my wife. It, it's <laughs> my wife got reincarnated as my fucking elementary school title, right? It, 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 it's something like that. Uh, their daughter, Mai, they have been in a state of despair since Takai's death. One evening, an elementary school girl visits the Nijima family, claiming to be the reincarnation of the mother that died. At first, they don't believe her, but the girl continues to give information that only the family knows. Keisuke and Mai soon recognize her as Takai, and the three begins to act as a family. Yeah, um, this one... I know that it's just bait, right? But... Hmm. I'm not really here to watch serious dramas you know i don't think my audience is here either maybe it's an amazing work of art they're obviously baiting super hard with the title of course this looks fucking terrible when you have a title such as like my wife is my fucking daughter if my wife became an elementary school student right like, come on you're fucking baiting so hard with the title i feel like at a certain point that kind of bait no matter how good the product is you're just fucking yourself over. Just like the reason why Bunny Girl Senpai, many people just didn't even give it a chance because they saw a Bunny Girl outfit in the poster pic. Like, you lead in with this title. I hope you know what you're fucking doing, but I'm sure a lot of DJs are going to check it out because of the title. I personally am not going to check it out because I don't, ha I don't care for serious dramas like this. I'm not here to fucking contemplate about death and fucking life. No, I'm here to have power fantasy moments. That's not me. 
Next. Natsume. Yuji seven season. Seven fucking I <laughs> What the fuck is this shit getting a seventh season? Is that good? Seven fucking seasons, bro. Oh, they did Durarara. This is like a popular anime, right? Interesting. But yeah, I uh I am not gonna cover seven seasons worth of content. Next one. Ruruni Kenshin, a failed project in my channel. Motherfuckers acted like they actually gave a fuck about the first season. Oh, we'll watch you. I promise. Just keep uploading Rooney Kenshin. Dropped off so quick. It is what it is. Unfortunate that they're going to the Kyoto arc. And Kyoto arc is supposed to be fucking amazing, right? But again, if the audience isn't there, you're wasting everyone's time. Next, we will be checking this out. I watched Durara. No, I haven't. I've just heard of these titles because people glaze this shit like no other like online. Saikyu no Shinshoku. This is gonna be the yapping anime, right? The most notorious talker runs the world's greatest clan. Yep, we already checked out this, you know, Isekai trailers, right? No one has grown up idolizing his grandfather, a legendary adventurer of the class known as Seekers. But when it comes time for Noel to set out on his own, much to his dismay, he turns out to be a talker, a support class with meager abilities. But Noel's got ambition in spades and the smarts to match, so he's determined to do whatever it takes to make the world his name. I enjoyed the whole concept of a guy that just yaps and it's power. I'm not sure exactly how that power is going to be turned. Is it going to be like Jujutsu Kaisen where, you know, a dude can just say die and you die? Or is it going to be him trying to convince people by using his brains and trying to be a smooth talker? Regardless, we will be checking this out. The studios is Felix Film and GA Crew. Felix Film, we just checked this out for, yeah, the made, you know, rom-com that we're going to check out. And this side, no clue. No clue. Hopefully it's good though. We'll be checking it out. Next up. This is... <laughs> Where's the fucking title? You lazy fucks! Is this the same as... <laughs> this, this is banished from the party because you're a healer, right? Yeah, this, this is basically a dude that got like... Okay, the story follows Roust, a healer who can only use one basic spell and is expelled from a first class party for being too weak. While the leader of the party realizes how great his abilities actually are after hiring another healer, Rouse finds new friends like Narsena who supports him in his rise to the top. Sounds extremely generic, right? Sounds extremely just cut of the mill. Like, of course, we've done this over and over where the fucking dude just gets neglected from a party because he it's a mismatch, but he's actually secretly OP or something. Yes, we will be checking out an episode like that. It's something like just like a just a generic power fantasy that we just love to eat in our channel. Next one. What is this? This one is Nina the Starry Bride. Uh, yeah, this is... Yeah, it's a reverse harem. Maybe it's not a reverse harem, but if I see a girl in the middle surrounded by a bunch of pretty boys, this is not an anime for my audience, therefore I am out. Next up! This is called... Goodbye Dragon Life. Long oh, I think Annie News mentioned this one, right? Long ago, the most ancient of divine dragons was slain by a human. The mighty dragon accepted its death when suddenly it was reborn as Doran, a man who lives in a quiet village. While spending another peaceful day toiling the fields, he meets Selina, a half-human, half-snake. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's where we made the monster Musume comparison, right? Uh, <laughs> this unlikely deal become friends, but challenges lies ahead that threaten their new world. Um... I feel like this kind of show, I mean, it's basically isekai without an isekai character, right? It's just like, you know, it's just fantasy, native isekai. I want to check out one episode, All right? I don't know. The whole premise seems kind of like that, you know, just fantasy trash junk food that we love. Maybe we'll check out one episode. Maybe. What's the studio? Synergy SP and Vega Entertainment. Let's check it out. No clue. Oh, they did Salad Bowl. Salad Bowl was actually pretty decent animated, at least for the first episode I saw, right? Uh, don't know anything else. How about up here? Hmm? Don't know. Just a bunch of old animes. They did Hamtaro though. No, it's Hamster Club. Never mind. Copyright this shit, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> Hamtaro has competition, bro. It's called Hamster Club. But uh, I'll probably check out one episode at the very least. Maybe. MF2. I'm scars. <laughs> We're not watching racing cars, guys. <laughs> uh, what is this one? Aono Mibudo. Okay. I mean, uh, the blue wolves of Mibu blue. Uh, I don't know, guys. These kind of historical Japanese settings. Sorry. <coughs> Ugh. 
these kind of historical Japanese setting animes never do well on my channel. You've seen Ruruni Kenshin, you've seen, you know, It Lives a Samurai. And now, I don't think, uh, it's maybe supposed to, you know, talk about the Shinsengumi shit. I think that, um, Freshest Anime will cover this shit while having Japanese subs and he'll farm the Japanese audience, which is a genius idea. There's gonna be a huge Japanese audience for this, but for the global audience, I do not give a fuck. I can change the title to English, Top Right Gear. There is no gear on the top right. I see no gear in the top right. I don't know what you're talking about. You're lying to me. Next up. Another JC Staff anime. Any chart, not any list, bro. Well, why the fuck are you telling me that you can change the fucking titles to English in a website that I'm not even fucking using right now? And you're acting as if I'm the one that's in the wrong. I'm literally on any list. Literally, you can see what I'm doing. You tell me I can change the title and I say there's no gear in the right. And you're like, bro, any chart, not any list. Fuck you. How the hell is this my fault? You know what website I'm on. You made the fucking blunder. Fuck you. Your left chart is any chart. This is any list. This is any chart though. What's going on right now? What the fuck is going on right now? Hold the fuck up. How are these both websites? What? Wait a minute. Hold the hold the fuck up. Wait. You're telling me that if I click on an any chart link, it goes to What? Why do they have different domains? Why do they have different domains? What's the fucking need for that? There must be a reason. Why would it not retain any chart domain? What? Is, is this is this some like copyright re like what what the, what? Is it to get away with? I, I don't know. I never realized that until today. And like, if you go here too, look at this AC. They have like a top left AC and an AL. They have a separate logo for it and everything. Why? What the? Because these are not the same sites. Any chart. This is just any list. And any chart. Well, I think it's still by the same devs. It's just there's a chart format and there's like a list format. I think that's pretty much it. All right, settings. Uh, we're going to change to English. There we go. Thank you for the advice. Let's go all the way bottom. Where were we at? Uh, right over here. The do over damsel conquers the dragon emperor. Jill breaks out of prison the night before she's set to be executed by her fiance. Crown Prince Gerald. She's stuck by an air while escaping, but instead of dying, she's transported six years into the past. Okay, regression anime. To the night she and Gerald met, this, uh, desperate to alter fate, she instead proposes to the first man she sees, Hadi's tail rave. Her enemy in the future. This is her last chance to get it right. Would my audience give a fuck about this? I'm not too sure, guys. Would you watch this? Mm, one of those animes where it's just like... I'm not sure if it resonates with my audience. But I see potential. It's JC staff, which is, you know, gonna be a fucking gamble, but I'll keep it in the back of my mind. Next up. Let this grieving soul retire. Uh, we will be watching this. This is basically, um... Uh, how do I compare this show? It's, oh yeah, it's any, any, any news basically said that this shit is basically, you know, Masayuki, if he was the story, like an isekai with Masayuki as the main character, right? The main character is supposedly weak while everyone around him is super OP. And they just make the main character a living legend, despite never having actually, you know, um, you know, he's, he's actually not that good. But that's where the comedy comes from. It's the golden age for treasure hunters, adventurous hunger for wealth, fame, power, and glory, who risk their lives in treasure vaults throughout the world. Cry and his childhood friend swore to become the greatest of them all, but that dream should have died that day Cry realized he wasn't cut out for the job, yet expectations continues to mount. 
right along with Christ's fears for his life, while his childhood friends climb closer to their dream. This grieving soul has one simple wish, to pack it all in and retire. But he can't, because I'm sure he just keeps getting into the situations where he doesn't want any part of it, but his friends end up being part of it, and new legends are made, and that's basically the premise. If you look at the studio, it's 0G. 2025, guys. 2025. 2025. Basically, like, Inukai-san's dog, but Busty Elf Girl's cat instead. Yep. Yep, we'll be watching that, probably. <laughs> okay. Um, they did this anime, right? This is the murder mystery one. Which, this girl has the big gazongas. Anything else I recognize? I don't. That's pretty much it. Um, I think that this is right up our alley. And we're definitely going to be checking out this anime. Next. Kabushiki Gaisha. Magi Lumiere. Oh, this is basically... um. Gushing over magical girls without the lewd, right? Kana Sakuragi is an excellent candidate for the job. Any job. She's motivated and organizes and has fantastic memory. Oh, never mind. This is not... This is not... Is it? So why has she interviewed for at over 15 companies without single, uh, receiving a single offer? Honestly, at this time of age, 15 companies? Only 15 interviews? That's rookie numbers, bro. I, I, people have gone through like hundreds of failed interviews just to get into one company. That's that's the current fucking job market. I'm sorry. It is what it is. She's trying to keep a positive attitude, but it seems like her bad luck is only getting worse when a monster crashes her latest interview. As havoc ensues, she finds herself helping the magical girl who comes to the rescue and ends up with more than just her life in return. Meet the newest magical girl at the Magi Lumiere Magical Girls Inc. I mean, the reason that people watch Gushing Over Magical Girls is for the complete etchy stuff, right? Like, would people watch this? Hmm. Maybe this is an amazing story that the, uh, and we don't need to rely on etchy. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not too sure about this one, guys. Uh, the studio is JC Staff and Moe. Moe, they've only ever done 2024 animes. And JC Staff, you know, they have way too many fucking projects to balance right now, but... This is a coin toss. I'm not really sure if I'm going to be covering this one, man. Next up. Love Lip third season, can't do that. Season 2, can't do that, but I would love to cover Nanatsu no Taizai one of these days. Please. Get Nanatsu no Taizai up in the polls, guys. Please. Mecha Ude, Mechanical Arms. What is this? It's a... Pre is there any prequels? Relations. Hmm. New anime projects, full-fledged anime series, long ago alien life forms came to Earth, fusing with people on the planet due to their appearance, they were dubbed the Mecha Ure. When they fused, they bore a striking resemblance to mechanized limbs. Look like just like a battle shonen, right? Through an involuntary partnership, average middle schooler Hikaru Amatsuka works alongside with the Mecha Ure Arma, who is an extremely rare and special existence, to protect Arma. The resistance groups of arms assigns a dual Mecha user, Aki Murasami, to follow him over go, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Nah. Looking like a generic battle shonen. Nah. I'm not sure. Is, is this going to be something I'm sleeping on? Like, based on just what's been shown here, it doesn't really... I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Not feeling it. I'm going to skip, unless you guys tell me it's good. Let's see. How I attended on all guys. <laughs> BL. College student Tokiwa gets invited to a mixer by his female classmate Suo. But when he arrives with his friends, they're greeted by three dazzlingly handsome men. But as the two group gets to know each other, they find themselves getting closer in unexpected ways. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it could be like a hilarious comedy, but it's just looking like a yaoi BL shit, right? I don't know. Or like a reverse harem. I don't know about this one, guys. Ah, she productions. What do they make? Oh, it's the fucking, uh, this one too. Oh, and the Division of the Coleus. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> I don't think you guys are the target audience. Next! This is the magical girl one, right? <sighs> Kurumi Mirai is in the first year of high school. She is enrolled in junior high section at Red Room Magic School, the world's only facility for mages that approved by International Mage League and is able to... Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. You guys gonna watch a magical girl show? What's the studio? JC Style. Ah, sh 
I don't think this is it, right? I don't think this is my audience. I think I'm skipping this one as well. It's not my audience. All right, next anime by Studio Nuts. What is this? Negative Positive Angler. The anime story centers on Tsunehiro Sasaki, a university student with a large debt and is told by his doctor that he only has two years left to live. Living the rest of his days in depression, Tsunehiro one day gets chased by a debt collector and falls into the sea. He is rescued by Han- Oh, fuck me. It's this anime. We watched it, we covered this in the Otaku Spirit video. I, uh... Basically the premise is like, this kid only has a couple months to live. He's depressed, got nothing goals going on, suddenly encounters a group of people, and now he's living a fulfilling life, making friendships, deep bonds, but time is ticking. Yeah, no, I'm not watching animes to get depressed. That's not me. I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic story. And <laughs> hey, look, Yojo Senki season two. When the shit, when the hell is this going to come out? But I'm sorry, guys. I'm not here to get depressed and be sad about anime. I'm here to have fun. I'm sure this is going to be a fantastic anime, but it's just not for me. Go enjoy it yourselves and cry all you want. Next up. Tuhai Urarate Mahjong. It's, an, it's a Mahjong anime? Money, woman, origins, K, a high school boy. Frequents the underground mahjong parlor, teeming with desires, earning him the moniker K of Ice. In the underworld, due to his cold-hearted strategy and stylish gameplay, rumors also circulate that he keeps a girl at home. <laughs> what? What do, you, what do you mean, keeps a girl at his home? What does that mean? Like, in a closet? What studio is this? East Fish Studio. I have no fucking clue. No clue. <laughs> This is basically a sports anime, but through Mahjong. It's a Gamba anime? I don't know. Maybe it's like a psychology anime, right? Mahjong, Seinen, and Yakuza. Uh, I don't think Mahjong is hype enough for my audience to give a fuck about this. It sounds pretty interesting to me. I'd honestly check it out by myself, but for you guys, I don't think this is it. Next up. Acro Trip. Shizuko, who lives in Sakai City, Niigata Prefecture, is an otaku girl who is a big fan of the magical girl, Berry Blossom, who protects the city against the evil organization, Fosa Magna. However, nobody was worried about the battle of the two anymore, because Chroma, the wicked evil villain, was lazy and weak. But Shizuko decided, I want to make my- Okay, my bad! Okay, I take it back. This is the gushing of magical girls um, without the loot. Um, couple of This one? This is not the one. I mistakenly thought that this was the Gushing Room Magical Girls uh, without the lewd. No, 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 no. It's this one where basically the, the, the main character decides that I'll be the villain to make sure that the Magical Girls are going to be hyped. I'm not sure. I am not sure how this one is going to be done. Studio Voile. It's probably going to be a skip for me, but uh, maybe it's amazing. If it is, let me know. Next up, Love Live Third Season. Can't watch that. Seven Deadly Sins, we can't watch that. Oh, sorry, I already scrolled down. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, we're on this one. Yo, I swear to God, I changed my fucking name. How the f Why is it still in Japanese? I guess some of them just don't have, you know. A terrified teacher at ghoul school. Huh. Rookie teacher Harukabe is a cowardly as they come. It's hard enough for him to handle human students without whimpering, and now he's going to be teaching at a full school full of monsters. Okay, it's a classroom of horrors. Harusaki has his mischievous students use every means at their disposal to prank him. Will this poor teacher be able to give um, I don't think this is my audience. This type of kind of like shonen environments with ghosts and shit, it's really not my audience. Satellite studio. Hulk. <laughs> you remember this anime? For real, this is fun. Except you guys didn't give a fuck and I had to drop it, but... I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. I think not. Next up. Haigakura. This is looking like Yaoi BL. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're doing. Come on now. Come on now. What, where's that hand going, bro? <laughs> where's that hand placement going, bro? What the hell is happening here? You got two femboys. One more fem, one more mask. The hand is covering, huh? I wonder what's going on here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not watching this. It's not my target audience. This is season two. Can't watch this. Oh shit! Prince of Tennis? 
Yo, forget Blue Lock U20. We have Tennis Prism Tennis U17? Holy shit. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, no one's talking about this though, huh? Absolutely nobody. It's it's a it's an old show, right? Prince of Tennis is a cult favorite back in the day. And I think this is like a sequel to it. What studio is actually doing this shit? Let's see. Uh studio, studio, studio. I don't see a studio here actually. Yeah, I don't know. Um <laughs> we're probably not gonna watch this because obviously we gotta watch a lot of episodes to get back then, but that's kind of hyped that Prince of Tennis is still going. Punido wa kawaii slime. Yeah, we're not gonna be watching this one. I don't think this is really us either. Idol Master second season? Second season content? Can't do that? Uh, I don't think we're doing this. What the fuck is this? <laughs> this is an anime? <laughs> this is an anime? <laughs> We should watch horror anime for next month for Halloween. Uh, I want to let you know, I don't give a fuck about horror anime. I don't think horror anime is fun at all. I don't care. Horror games, on the other hand, are, I guess, kind of fun, but I have no give a fuck about horror animes. Dark Gathering was all right, but it's just not me. And that's pretty much it. We got a bunch of random stragglers here. I have no clue what the fuck is going on here. These are TV shorts that we're probably not going to be covering. And The Leftovers. Can't believe this is actually getting a second quarter. There's some movies as well, but that's pretty much it, right? There's a lot of... Summer 2024 has been a little bit of a disappointment in terms of, like, high-impact shows that my audience would like, which is going to be, like, ReZero, right? Blue Lock or fucking Arifurata or Danmachi, these other Isekai power fantasies. But now they're all coming back, and I'm very excited. ReZero is obviously going to be number one pick, right? We've been going fucking hard. There's over 200 videos in the playlist now, and we're still not done season two just yet. Don da Don, I hope it's going to do well. I have... I'm not going to, like, hope that this is going to do well on my channel, but of course I'm going to check it out because it's going to be one of those animes that I need to put my bid in to try to get the tourist. Blue Lock, I hope it does well. There was a Blue Lock audience back in the day, kind of, not really, obviously. They probably all have left and a bunch of new people showed up. I don't know about that, but that's pretty much it. I'm very excited for this new season of Isekais to come back with, you know, ReZero just dominating. Hope you guys are too. And if there's anything that I missed out on, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you next time. I skipped over Trillion Game, by the way. Oh, we already talked about Trillion Game. Uh, trillion Game, Trillion Game, Trillion Game. Uh, yeah, this one. It is by Madhouse. It is by Madhouse, but like, I don't think uh, that anime is really gonna be something my audience cares, cares about. We did see it through Otaku Spirit. The, the premise looks fun, but the overall art style and the concept of it, I think I would enjoy it, but I don't think you guys will. But again, if I'm wrong, just let me know. But those motherfuckers are gonna be the vocal minority, and what matters is just upload and see what the lurkers think, right? It is what it is.